Here's what's happening now, and you probably could have guessed it. We still have showers hanging around parts of the area, and it is still does not feel like summer. We'll see if that changes as we head towards the weekend. Paula? Hi, Ben. A state senator posts a message on Facebook intimating that he needs a gun before entering the city of Detroit. He tells us it was not a shot against Detroit, but what do Detroiters say when they see the post? Karen? All right, Paula, also ahead, health care setback for Republicans breaking at this hour well, afternoon, as the Senate's everyone. new plan uh, is put on hold. So what We're happens next? The discussion. Up first, family tragedy. Two children and their grandmother trapped in a house fire in Detroit. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Karen Drew. First at four, a house fire turns into a family tragedy in Detroit. It happened on the city's west side. Twin three-year-old boys and their grandmother killed in a fire. The flames broke out just before one this morning at a two-story home on Losser. Investigators say a stove likely caused that fire, which trapped the twins. A four-year-old and their grandmother upstairs. Neighbors say they can't believe what happened. They'll always remember the twins as happy little kids. I can't believe it. I've been knowing them for like four or five years. Like I said, I just can't believe that this happened. While the twins and the grandmother died of smoke inhalation, the four-year-old boy was taken to the hospital with second and third degree burns. Ahead at five, Priya Mann will update how that child is doing and how the family is coping with their loss. An Inkster woman will be spending the next 9 to 15 years in prison for her role in the death of a 3-year-old boy. 21-year-old Andrea Bracy pled guilty to involuntary manslaughter and second-degree child abuse in connection with the beating death of her boyfriend's son, Timmy Smith. Her boyfriend, 41-year-old Aurelio Smith, was originally charged in the boy's death but was found not guilty by a jury. Three people remain hospitalized at this hour after two shootings last night in downtown Detroit. The first shooting happened just before 10 last night. Police say two men were arguing when one of them pulled out a gun and opened fire, shooting a woman, a bystander, in the hip. Just a few blocks away, two teens were shot in a separate incident. A 17-year-old boy was shot in the stomach and is listed in critical condition. The other victim, a 17-year-old girl, is listed as stable. On the heels of those shootings, a Facebook post from a Michigan state senator is getting a lot of attention today. The senator is from a district near Lansing. Rick Jones posted, quote, I'm headed to Detroit for a meeting today before anyone asks, yes, I have a CPL. We sent our Paula Tutman to get some reaction to that post in the city of Detroit. She joins us live near Eastern Market. And Paula, I can imagine many people are upset with that post. Well, yeah, I mean, he's getting some support, but yeah, a lot of people are very upset. I do want to add that this elected official is also a former law enforcer. He tells me he does not believe in open carry, but he does fully believe in the right to carry a concealed weapon if you have the proper documentation. We caught up with Senator Rick Jones after his meeting today at American Jewelry and Loan, several feet from the border of Southfield. He stands by his post that says, I'm headed to Detroit for a meeting today. Before anyone asks, yes, I have a CPL. In the past, whenever I say I'm going to Detroit or going to Flint, I've had many people say, oh, are you carrying? Do you have a CPL? And so today I simply posted, yes, I have a CPL. In fact, he points to the words of the Detroit police chief. The chief of police of Detroit made public statement that everybody that legally can carry should carry in Detroit. And as a former police officer, I also believe that people should be able to defend themselves from bad people and evil. At a news conference today, our Rod Maloney asked Chief Craig about the post. Uh, certainly if they're well trained, they're responsible. Uh, I don't have a personal issue with it. I can't believe that. We showed the post to people who live or work in Detroit. What? You gotta be kidding me. Like Bethany Shorb, who's owned a business in the city in downtown proper for more than 12 years. The owner of Well Done Goods on Gratiot and Cyber Optics Tie Lab. She saw the post and seethed. It immensely hurts my business because we're a small city in Detroit. We need people from the suburbs to come down and consume what we make, what we offer. And if you're scaring people out of the city, get out of office. Like seriously, get out. 
stay stay in your place up here wherever you are but don't be don't be talking about my city like that inside her store Christy who also lives in the city of Detroit it's a perception that's been going on for a long time and I think it will probably change over time. At Campus Martius, mixed feelings. That's horrible. He should know better than that. I think it's his right to, I mean, I, I, I guess I could post that, right? So why can't he? So we also asked Mayor Duggan's office for a comment. Actually, we wanted to talk to the mayor. Uh, his main spokesperson basically said his words, we're not going to be baited by this, so no comment. However, there are plenty of people, uh, the state senator's constituents, who are commenting on his Facebook page. Karen? All right. Thank you very much, Paula. Time now for our first look at the forecast. And a little cooler out there, Ben. It just doesn't feel like June. Uh, we are days away from the 4th of July, Karen, and it does not feel like this time of year at all. And yet again, we're watching scattered showers. Most of these in our north zone, uh, north of uh, I-69, but some of those could be moving a little bit further south as we get later on into the evening hours. Not going to be big as far as the amounts of rain out of this, but still could be a couple raindrops around. Temperatures unseasonably cool to say the least. In fact, we're going to be down to around 60 degrees at midnight and still falling into the 50s for overnight lows. There is a warm up in the seven day forecast. We'll check that out. And of course, look at July 4th, which is in seven day forecast in just a few minutes. Karen. All right. Thank you, Ben. Let's talk about that breaking news from Washington. Another setback for Republicans as they struggle to repeal and replace Obamacare. Senate leadership has looked at the numbers and decided they cannot meet their goal of a vote on the plan this week. There are late breaking developments in Washington. Devin Skillian is in the newsroom going through all the latest information. What can you tell us, Devin? Uh, well, Karen, of course, nobody uh, likes to lose. And Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell apparently has seen that he cannot win approval of his health care bill, at least as it's written right now. President Trump doesn't uh, like to lose either, so he's meeting with all the Republican senators uh, at this hour. This comes after Senator McConnell announced that the vote will be held off until after the 4th of July break. We're going to continue the discussions within our conference on the differences that we have that we're continuing to try to litigate. Uh, consequently, we will not be on the bill this week, but we're still working toward getting uh, at least 50 people in a comfortable place. Uh, latest trouble really came uh, from the Congressional Budget Office, which projected that 22 million more Americans would be left uninsured by 2026 under this Senate plan. That added to the ranks of Republicans opposed to the bill. At last count, six GOP senators are against it as it's written right now. Republican leaders can really only afford two defections, of course. A vote on the plan has been postponed now until after their uh, break for the fourth. President Trump meeting again, as I mentioned earlier, with Republican senators right now. Democrats have responded saying that they are willing to talk about some changes in the original Affordable Care Act. We're happy to negotiate. We want to sit down and make the system better. The private exchanges need some work. Prescription drug prices are too high. Out-of-pocket costs in some areas are too high. But Medicaid works. It's saving money. It's saving lives. So as we mentioned, uh, really the changing and uh, negotiating over this bill is starting right now with the president meeting with uh, senators at the White House and we would expect more negotiations through the weekend and right through that 4th of July holiday. An update coming up from Washington here on Local 4 News at 5. Karen, back to you. All right, sounds good. We'll check back at that time. Thank you, Devin. No matter what happens in Congress, there's a lot of uncertainty and concern about our entire health care system. Dr. Frank McGeorge is covering that part of the story. Frank? Well, Karen, the emotional battle, battle over health care is far from new. America has struggled with how to make it work for over 100 years. Every developed country in the world other than the United States is clear about how they've designed their health system. So tonight at 11, I'm looking at how we got here, from missed opportunities to make it better to where we could go next. And then all day tomorrow, we are tackling the health care crisis right here on Local 4. Karen? All right, thank you, Doc. Tennis star Serena Williams has reached many milestones in her career. Still ahead, Serena bears it all. The photo a lot of people are talking about today. Also, a renegade elephant caught on camera, causing panic in a residential area. Why so many people were afraid?
Up first, Syria's president cozies up to Russia while the Trump administration says it wasn't just targeting Syria with an ominous warning. The hunt for coming up all new on Local 4 News at 5 and 6. We all like to think of our pets as part of the family. So take a look here. This is Abby and this is Marley. Now, they are Bichon Poodle brothers and sisters from the same litter. But Marley here is looking a little worse for the wear because, well, he survived a coyote attack right here in Metro Detroit. And boy, are his owners upset. We'll hear what they ended up paying to just fix this on Local 4 News at 6. All right, thank you, Rob. Is Syria getting ready to launch a chemical weapon attack on its own people? Today, the Pentagon says it has detected, quote, active preparations for a chemical attack. The Syrian government has denied claims it used chemical weapons in April, which sparked a U.S. missile attack. The Pentagon's new statement gives support to an unusual warning for the White House overnight. It said Syria would, quote, pay a heavy price for any new chemical attacks. The U.S. ambassador to the United Nations says that warning is not just for Syria. I believe that the goal is at this point um, not just to send Assad a message, but to send Russia and Iran a message that if this happens again, we are putting you on notice. Meantime, Syrian President Bashar al-Assad visited a Russian air base today, emphasizing Russia's support for his government in Syria's long civil war. First at four, we're also tracking some other stories making news all around the world. Hundreds of people staged a protest against the United States and Pakistan. They're not happy the Trump administration has labeled Syed Salahuddin as a global terrorist. While the U.S. and India think he deserves that label, many Pakistanis think he's a hero for trying to evict India from the largely Muslim region of Kashmir. Meantime in Russia, more than 6,000 emergency crews are working to fight some massive forest fires. The flames and smoke are covering a region in Siberia. The fires started last week and have burned more than 120 acres. Luckily, there are no reports of any deaths. And look at this video from India. A renegade elephant stopped traffic and sparked panic as it ran through a residential area. As the human population grows, people are pushing into the elephant's natural habitat. The animals wander into residential streets looking for food and water, sometimes with fatal consequences for both humans and the animals. This time, this elephant eventually wandered back into the forest and no one was injured. You know you're having a bad day when? Exactly. We've got an <laughs> elephant in the middle of the road and you don't know wow. exactly where to run. <laughs> oh, we're not dealing with that here, clearly, but we are dealing with some cooler temperatures. And I know you're ready for some heat, right? It would be kind of nice. We had the teaser in the beginning of June and then everything just changed. Yeah, we sort of put it in reverse, but I think we're going to get back in gear uh, as we get later into the forecast. Tonight, though, Tigers are in town, uh, are coming back, and so are the Kansas City Royals. Even though there's a slight chance uh, that we could see a shower around uh, by the uh, start of the game, I think most of the uh, conditions are going to be dry. We will be back into the 60s. So just like at the fireworks last night, it's going to be cool, especially towards the tail end. As skies clear out, uh, we'll be down to 66 degrees. So there's some sunshine out around the cumulus clouds downtown right now, but uh, generally more clouds than sun. 74 is what we've got for a temperature, and the winds are out of the west northwest. 12 does not feel like we're about to wrap up the month of June here, and we do have some showers as we showed you at the top of the show. Most of those are in our north zone, uh, but those are going to be sinking a little bit further south as we get into the evening hours. Not going to amount to much as far as the uh, amounts of rainfall go, but do expect to see at least a couple raindrops, especially the further north you are uh, through the evening hours tonight. Uh, we will be checking out uh, high pressure as we get into the daytime hours tomorrow. Again, anything that we see in the form of rain today is going to exit. Then as we get into tomorrow, Skies are going to stay dry through the daytime hours, but once we get into the evening, there will be some showers and thunderstorms start to move across the northern part of the state. That could brush our north zone. Uh, and as we get overnight, uh, that may sink a little bit further south. Thursday starts out dry, but we start getting into a very active pattern at this point. Thursday afternoon, not just showers, but thunderstorms along this cold front. 
Some of those could be on the strong side, and then that front's not going to move very much further south. So that's going to be a focus point uh, for thunderstorms that takes us into Friday as well, and then eventually uh, heading into the upcoming weekend with thunderstorm chances stretching into early Saturday. 55 tonight, southwest winds are going to be light, and then once we get these evening showers out of here, uh, things start to become more clear uh, going into tomorrow uh, overnight into tomorrow morning. Temperatures close to 80 degrees in our four zone forecast. We'll call it 79 here in our metro zone. Couple 80s show up in our south zone. Dundee, Blissfield, Adrian, you may be at 80 degrees. A little bit cooler out here towards the uh, Lake Erie shoreline, but not by much. West zone generally upper 70s here, and same goes in our north zone. Not a whole lot cooler here uh, for high temperatures tomorrow. Maybe as cool as 76 up around Sandusky and Lexington. St. Clair at 76, and some of our warmer temperatures down here towards M59 at 78. So the 4th of July is now in view, and our seven day forecast and it looks like we'll start warming up. At least we'll get right back to average for most of this forecast pretty consistently low to mid 80s starting Thursday and continuing through the 4th of July with thunderstorm chances finish the week, take us into at least the start of the weekend and then they're going to return for Monday and possibly for the holiday on Tuesday as well. Karen. All right, thank you, Ben. Serena Williams has been on a lot of magazine covers, but never like this one. The new cover and a hint about her wedding plans ahead. Up first from selfies to pictures of food, it seems everybody is using their cameras 24-7. So, does taking photos all the time help or hurt your memory? What new research is saying? Coming up next. All right, let's talk trending stories. You know, whenever you look at social media sites, you probably see all those photos. Some people wonder if taking photos all the time helps or hurts your memory. Well, today, new research says taking photos may actually help us remember certain details better. It found people who take photos remembered visual details better. People even had better memories of objects they didn't actually photograph, but they had more trouble remembering what they heard at the time. I know I can't remember a phone number <laughs> because they're all in the But phone. yeah, but it's true. But if you're visual, like it does seem like when you're going back through a trip and you don't, you know, you don't remember everything you did, but then you start looking at the pictures, then it helps it you. It does help, yep. You take a lot of pictures? Um, less than I should. Less than? I take too many probably. <laughs> Drive my husband crazy. <laughs> in trending stories, believe it or not, the ATM or automatic teller machine is 50 years old today. An Englishman claims credit for coming up with the idea back in 1967. The first ATM was installed by Barclays Bank in London. It took two more years to come to the United States. Customers did use pins right from the start, but back then, the machines needed special checks with radioactive carbon 14 to make a withdrawal because magnetic codes weren't even invented yet and there were no fees back then either. That was my thing. I remember when they came out, I was like, oh, I'm not paying $2 to get my own money. Yeah, and who goes to a teller to get cash anymore? I mean, you're, you seem like everything's I just go to the automated. ATM. Well, um, Following in the footsteps of Demi Moore, this cover has been really the talk of town. Remember Demi Moore did it, Mariah Carey, Jessica Simpson, well, tennis star Serena Williams on the cover of Vanity Fair. She poses naked, showing off her baby bump. Inside, she talks about how she found out she was pregnant just before the Australian Open, which she won without dropping a cent. She also says she'll marry her fiance, the founder of Reddit, in the fall after the baby is born. And get ready for more Alec Baldwin as President Donald Trump on Saturday Night Live. Love it or hate it, the actor says he will return in the fall to continue his impersonation of the president. Baldwin says he will likely make fewer appearances, as he puts it, a couple of celery sticks instead of a whole meal. But he will be back. By the way, Baldwin has hosted SNL a record 17 times so far. Still ahead, heartbreak turns into a happy ending for the owners of this precious pup. A story of survival and why the dog is getting a lot of special attention right now.